Welcome to a brand new edition of Bike Life. And as usual, we've got a full throttle version for you. And for British Superbikes, we were at Snetterton, the new 300 circuit. The weather was good. 43,000 people turned up and it was a, an action-packed weekend to say the least. And we're halfway through the British Superbike Championship for 2011. Uh, this week we catch up with the relentless uh, by Taz Suzuki team uh, with their riders Josh Brooks and Alistair Seeley. And I have to say, James, you've not brought it onto the table, but I have to bring it up. Explain this little gizmo to us. Right, this thing, um, well, these are popular. We, uh, we use these things extensively. This is a GoPro camera. Um, and I have this here because I stuck it on the Suzuki GSR 750, which I've been testing. And I have been commuting on it for a few days. And let's see how that went. Here it is, Suzuki's new GSR 750, um, and I've been lucky enough to have this for a week. I've been commuting on it, and I have to say I am thoroughly enjoying it. It's uh, 750, it's based on the GSXR 750 engine, but it uh, makes much more torque. Um, it's doing 105 horsepower as opposed to 150 horsepower, 145 horsepower, um, but it's plenty. This is a naked bike, it's not a sports bike, even though it's not designed to look like a sports bike. It is certainly sporty. Um, amazingly responsive, thr throttle response. You literally have to turn it and hint at it and, and it's ready to go. It's, um, it's designed for this type of territory, for designed for running around in town. Um, great to see a fuel indicator so I know exactly where I am fuel-wise. I know if I'm about to run out of fuel. Um, it's got a gear indicator. Not that a bike like this particularly needs it, but sometimes it's nice to have and you find yourself getting used to it, um, particularly in town. And if you're wanting to nip in and out of, uh, of, of cars and filter properly, it's nice to know that you're in the right gear. One thing that makes this bike so good in town is the sitting position. It's, um, it isn't prone like a sports bike. You are upright. You, you've got wide, good wide bars and, and it, it allows you to turn easily. Your shoulders aren't pushed up into your helmet so you can move your head around. And equally, you're high up. You can actually look down on the cars. I, I was quite surprised at how much higher you are when you're in that when you're in an upright position and how much better your visibility is. I'm used to commuting on a sports bike and this was so much easier. Another thing about this bike is that you don't have to be worrying about carrying your alarm fob. The immobiliser is actually built into the key. So you stick it in the bike, turn it on, it recognises that this key is unique and it uh, turns off the immobiliser and you're ready to go. And Suzuki's added something to help the torque. Um, the exhaust has a valve in it which opens up at a particular RPM which uh, helps improve the torque and uh, delivers what is actually quite frankly a, a really sporting performance. It's 105 horsepower but it doesn't feel like it. Um, it really gets going. And so 105 horsepower, what does it sound like? Well it actually sounds quite good. <laughs> It's got that classic Suzuki rasp, which has made the GSXR engine so popular and uh, loved by so many people. This feels like a GSXR. It, it, you feel like you're sitting on one, although it's a, it's a naked bike. So how did you get on? How did you like it? Um, I thought it was pretty interesting. It took me a little bit of time because I'm used to a sports bike and with the bars up here, you suddenly turn and it turns much more than you think. Um, but the first thing I noticed on the way back from the office was, was how much higher up you are when you're sitting in that position rather than, obviously it makes mm. sense that you know, you're up there rather than down yeah. there. But the visibility is, um, is so much better. And uh, as a commuter bike, it's great. I mean, it's, it's got bags of oomph and 
you know, it works. It's good. It's comfortable. It's quick. Um, and it looks pretty cool. You've seen it. You've it looks had good. a go, didn't you? Yeah, no, I had a quick go. And oh, yeah, yeah I really liked it. it. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Really good around town, so good wide steering lock. As yeah. you say, you're sitting upright so you can see where you're going. The mirrors are kind of high enough to go over most car mirrors so you can filter quite nicely. Yeah. And yeah, like you say, looks looks the part. It does, it's pretty cool. Which is a big, so it's a big bit big like being in a high Range Rover compared to a Mini. Well, you, you, yeah, sort of, yeah. A bit like being in a high Range Rover compared to a Mini. <laughs> Something like that. But uh, no, it's good. It was, it was all right. Um, I put this on it, as you saw in the, in the, in the film. Um, I think we're going to have a look at the another Spanish trip. Um, put another one of these on. So, Paul, last episode we had a good look at Snetterton, the mm. 300, the new circuit. Um, it proved to be what we suspected, an amazing place for a BSB race. 43,000 turned out, mm. which was incredible. Well, I think that was a record in itself. So it? Snetterton have never had in the history mm. of car and bike racing um, anywhere close to that number. And I think it's interesting because the track of the circuit is a lot better, but because it's so flat, it's difficult to watch at. And so when we went last year, you got to pick your spot and really, yeah. you know, either by the bomb hole or yeah. start finish straight. Not, you can't see a lot of the circuit, but this mm. year with the infield, when they built that, they built some new raised viewing areas and um, yeah. just makes, transforms it. So, yeah. and the riders, I think, liked it as well, didn't they? Well, they do, I mean, they're backwards and forwards, aren't they? Mm. The Agostini bit, the viewing area on the Agostini piece, you can, you know, you've got, coming down this way, then up that way, and then back that way, yeah. and then that way, it's fantastic, yeah. I mean, really great. And I think also, because we're coming to the halfway point now of the season, um, the excitement's starting to build. Mm. Um, you know, people are gonna start paying more attention to who's in the top six for the title showdown, yeah. the title fight. Um, and with the Mirror Credit UK Evo Cup as well, they're starting to be, that's starting to shape up to have about four or five people who look like they're in contention for it. So. Yeah. Actually, <clears throat> the series has kind of really got its legs now, and um, yeah. you know I think the competition is kind of building to a crescendo. And Alton Park next is is, is, um, is going to be probably be a defining round as well. Yeah, I think it will. So uh, let's start with Snetterton. So we were there with uh, with the kit and crew. Let's see um, how we got on and who we spoke to. So we joined um, Alex Lowe's down in the MSS Colchester Kawasaki Garage. Um, Alex, you've been on the bike for a couple of a couple of times out now. You qualified tenth here. How are you feeling for the race ahead? Yeah, I feel really good. It's the first proper dry weekend I've had on the bike, and uh, yeah, it's going okay. Unfortunately, I had a little bit of a slip off yesterday, which uh, you know halted our progress a little bit. But it was quite fast this morning on race tyres, and uh, I think we should be in a good position for the race. Great. And thinking ahead, next weekend you've got um, the chance of a lifetime. You're riding the Castle Honda Johnny Ray's uh, number four bike at Bruneau. How are you feeling about that? Obviously, I'm, you know, I'm really excited about that. It's a good opportunity for me, and uh, uh, it's, it's a big chance. But obviously, today my, my focus is 100% on BSB and uh, two good rides today, and then I'll, uh, I'll be thinking about it tonight. You won the Evo race on the podium. It's got, it's got to be good, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's, uh, it's been a hard year for me. I broke my wrist at the first round of the year, so it took a long time to recover. Eventually, I've got you know really good help from the physios here at the circuit, and they've uh, worked wonders on me this weekend. So. Uh, it's, yeah, I knew I could do it, and you know I showed all weekend. I've had the pace, and yeah, first race was perfect. So I just need more of the same in the second one. Well, I'm sure you will. You seem to be well on pace, um, and the bike's behaving well. Oh, the bike's really, really good. You know, it's been uh, perfect all weekend. Um, yeah, it's just just great to be on a good bike and a good team, and, and you know being able to do the job. And what about Snetterton? Because they've done so much to this course in the last in the last year. Um, we were here the other day riding it. It's fan the inf infield's fantastic, and for you Evo boys, it must be a, a dream because you can, you know, I mean, it's, you don't need the all that power of the British Superbike on that inner inner circuit. H how does that work? You, I mean, like you say, you can race with the guys through there. You know, yeah, they pull it. You know, obviously a bit out of us on the straights, but um, yeah, it just it makes better racing. There's more passing opportunities. Um, it's got it's got a really good feel to the track. You know, nice and flowing. So, it's, uh, yeah, no, they've made a big improvement. So we're in the back of the motor point Yamaha track, going here with Loris Baz. So how did race one go for you? Race one went not too bad. Uh, the start was really sh shit. I, w I was five on the grid and back 14 in the first lap. So just fighting all the race to come back. Uh, not easy track to overtake, so you'd need to be really sure where you can pass. So I passed uh, Rutter, Ickman, then James Walker. Uh, Walker passed me back in the, at the end of the race. So we're halfway through the season already, so I hear there's a bit of rumours with sponsorship problems. So how are you finding that? 
Yeah, it was. I was not sure to come here until Wednesday night. So Rob called me and said, "Okay, we find something with Yama." So I really have to say big thanks to Yama because they they always follow me from 2008 and they follow me again now. So they always help me. So that's that's just really cool from them. Yeah, my sponsor had a big problem uh, in his work, so I can't say anything. He will he will pay straight away when when all this problem will be sorted. So. Uh, Rob was cool from the beginning of the year, make me ride with no money. So that everybody tried to to do the best, but the race by race was not the best. Now I'm nearly sure to finish the season, so will be really better to to ride. Only concentrate on ride and not the will will I be on the next race or not. So nice to see Graham Garland winning um, Honda WFR, doing yeah. incredibly well. And their team actually are doing well. So Glenn yeah. Richards, right at the top of the mirror.co.uk Evo standings. He's been yeah. pretty consistent from the off. Well, he's and podium all the time, pretty much. Yes. Yeah. 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 He hasn't really been off the top yeah. step or second step. Yeah. And then Jake Zemke, the American, has joined the team and he got his first win in race yeah. two. So, so that, that, yeah, I mean, what are they doing with that bike? Yeah. They, got into it, their team manager Miles, who we spoke to at Thruxton, was very clear that they got into the Evo Championship to develop the bike for Evo rules and that they're obviously doing yeah. well and taking it seriously and getting the results. And so there's a common link, WFR. Mm. Each time we sit here, we introduce Alex Lowe's into the conversation. Uh, this time, WFR to Kawasaki. Uh, at the end of the start, stop straight, pit lane straight, he had the engine problem, which spat a bit of oil onto the onto the track. Yeah, he's been unlucky actually, Alex. Um, you know, the step up from Evo to um, the full British Superbike class, um, that was the end of his race and obviously it caused, led to that huge, huge accident. Unbelievable. Uh, for Simon Andrews um, and Steve Brogan. Yeah. Um, and we've got a run of photos which um, from the British Superbike mm. um, website and you can see the, the height here where the bike is catapulting up into the air. And then the front forks, if you look at the front forks, 60 feet, something like that. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> they didn't get away with it. Simon Andrews got a, a badly broken leg um, and uh, Steve Brogan injured as well, but they were kind of lucky. It was a almost 170 mile an hour crash. Incredible, so. wasn't it? Absolutely incredible. So we wish both those boys well. Yeah. Um, and then John Hopkins nearly did a double. Um, Fantastic in the first race. Had the crash not happened, mm. then you know we got the red flag. Um, they regrouped and went out again, and uh, it all got a bit, a bit uh, heated at the end of that race with um, Josh Brooks and Shaky Byrne sliding underneath Hop Hopper yeah. just near the end. Well, I think um, well, Hopper and well, all those guys are deadly serious about the championship. But you can really tell the two for me that you can see it in their eyes is. Um, is Hopper and, and Byrne, and mm. neither of those two want to crash. They want every single point, they want every single podium credit. Yeah. And <clears throat> Hopper, I suppose, didn't want to risk it all. Um, you know, great battle, um, yeah. but he looks absolutely focused every single race. Yeah. And it's just getting better and better, isn't yeah. it? You know, he, he's getting, I think he's enjoying it more. He's getting more and more used to the circuits. Mm. He understands BSB now mm. and comparing how he approaches a race now with how he started at Brands Hatch in the first race when he put it into the gravel at Druids. Yeah. But we're halfway in the season and, and he seems to be so in, so in control of it. I think you can tell that he's been on the world scene. He's just that little bit more professional. Um, he, <clears throat> the way he approaches the tracks, you know, he's not ridden in Britain. He doesn't yeah. really know about cold weather riding. He doesn't know our nadry little bumpy circuits. No, the the Americans generally don't yeah. like them. He's never seen them before. Yeah. Yeah, he gets out there, he learns it very quickly, and yeah. um, he puts everything into it. Not to say that the others don't, no, but he's slightly more, you can tell that the technical level of expertise is, yeah. is higher. No, it's staggering. And so, yeah, John Hopkins, he's obviously, as we say, he's really getting into his stride. Mm. Um, he's secure in the top six, as is Shaky Byrne and uh, Tommy Hill. What are your thoughts? We've got Josh Brooks getting his form together at Snetterton. Yeah. I mean, he was really on it, wasn't he? Yeah. And Keo. I think the, the six that are there are the six that you'd expect. Yeah. Um, and the top two are the 
two you'd expect to be at the top, Hopper and Burn, and there's not much in it. You know, there's mm. uh, 18 points between those two at this halfway stage. Then it drops, you know, 40 points or so back to third place. But Josh Brooks in sixth, um, only 91 points compared to 201. Um, but I guess that doesn't count. What counts is being in that top six. Yeah. But below that, any any number of four or five riders could um, take his place. Yeah, and it's uh, this is when it starts to get very exciting, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, as you rightly say, those are the guys you'd expect to see up there. We've got some others who are doing particularly well. Kirkham and Hickman both done very well. Croft and at Thruxton. Um, who else do you think might might creep up there? Um, well, definitely, definitely money on Kirkham because I think he's been a bit unlucky actually. Yeah. Um, he's had just a couple of bad results through technical issues. He's had a couple of crashes that. You know, he's having real grip problems. Yeah. Um, they still haven't. A bit like Josh Brooks was saying, it's taken him this long to to work out how he and the bike come together to work as a as a package mm. that, that that can do it. Um, John in Q1 of qualifying put the fastest time in yeah. and, but they were on a zero compound tyre so the grip was there grip's there, he puts in the fastest time um, so everybody knows he's got the ability to do it yeah. but it's, he's struggling with grip um, but I, I, I'd imagine he'll be there um, I suppose the other ones for me it, it's a difficult one but the interesting thing will be I think if the weather comes back into play, so when it rains, mm. we see people on the podium even who just haven't featured before. So Gary Mason, yeah. MSS Colchester Kawasaki, yeah. and you know, crikey, those guys could do with some some yeah. luck. Gary's yeah. a brilliant rider. He is, yeah. um, uh, whenever it rains, he does well, yeah. which kind of testament to his talent. Really. Well, he's courageous, isn't he? Really? Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm. Peter Hickman, you'll remember Thruxton. I mean, what do you think of him? He's brilliant. I mean, it's just, he's again a really, really nice bloke. We interviewed him in, at Brands for pre season. Mm. And he was so, of all the, all the riders, you know, you go in and they're all busy and they're testing. He's straight away going, Yeah, come on, hey, how are you doing? Let's have a chat. Yeah. Really nice bloke. So. Well, the bike that he's on is, is good enough. We know that. It's Keo's mm. championship winning bike from last yeah. year. Um, and, you know, he's struggled for a few years, Peter Hickman. and now to be in mm. very close to the top six is great to see. Yeah. Who else do you think um, is in with a chance of getting into the top six? Well, you mentioned the weather. So mm. if it starts to pee down with rain, then we've got to have a, you know, Michael Russ is going to be there, isn't he? Because yep. the guy's a legend when it's wet. Yeah. And if we do get a wet back half of the season, then we'd expect to see him up there. And there's enough time for that to happen. Um, otherwise, Loris Baz, mm. who's, you know, he's a... He's a talent, he's only 18 years old, but uh, again, courageous rider. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens to his ride. There's a kind of question mark over that. And I, mm. I guess <clears throat> just because we are in the depths of a recession, it's not going to be easy. It isn't a given that all these teams will make it to the end of the season. No. Um, in fact, a number of riders have gone, haven't they? And Dan, Dan Limfoot's just lost his ride. You know about Jenny. Yeah. Um, it happens. Yeah, and even Loris's is kind of under, yeah. under threat. I think the one for me, and you know, I think a crowd favourite, and he did brilliantly at Snetterton, Chris Walker. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, his that Primo Kawasaki team of building and building, and to get two eighths, mm. um, P8 uh, twice is quite amazing. Yeah. Um, and I think if you know we're only halfway, if if he can start stringing a few more of those together. Yeah. then wouldn't it be exciting if he could get himself into the top six? Oh, it'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? I mean, it's one of those things that for, for that to change around as much as, you know, it might, yeah. it means that some of those top six boys are going to have to have DNFs and, and uh, hopefully if they do, then it's for, for mechanical reasons rather than mm -hmm. um, any, any more crashes like we saw at Snetterton because that was seriously worrying yeah. right, when, you know, mm -hmm. when that was happening. Talking about the... Uh, the world circuit, which some of those guys have a huge amount of experience on. Um, Alex Lowe's off to ride the bike that you rode. Yes. At Goodwood. So we had a bit of a joke about that when, when we caught up with him, but that's quite right. So um, Alex Lowe's is great chance, actually. Um, when you think he started the season as a Mirror.co.uk Credit UK Evo rider, mm. within a few weeks, he's now deputising at Bruneau. Uh, World Superbikes for the injured Jonathan Ray 
and exactly right riding the <laughs> riding the bike. Your that, bike. <laughs> that I, my bike, actually, that I rode up. Yeah, yeah we up were letting him have it for, for the weekend. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so um, tell us yeah. about Goodwood. What was it like? What was Oh, it was fantastic. You know, they call it glorious Goodwood, and <clears throat> it really was. Um, well, we were both there. Yeah. The sun was out. Um, it's a fantastic atmosphere, brilliant grounds, all kinds of machinery, not just brilliant old bikes, brand new bikes, w, um, WSBK bikes. John McGuinness, mm. the TT Legends team, Sammy Miller bringing five yeah. or six of the 400 machines from his museum, some of the great cars that you liked. Yeah. There's just no end to it, really. It's a it's a fantastic day out. It was. It was. It was great fun. The weather was good. The red arrows, all of those <coughs> things, were brilliant. Fantastic location. I mean, really great location. Um, I thought it was great to see some of the bikes that we're going to see at the um, festival of a thousand bikes at Mallory, coming up at the, yes. at the weekend. Yeah. And again, with some legend legends of motor racing attending there, riding these bikes, and we'll be there. That's going to be a, a, a really interesting thing. Um, but you rode it up the hill. It was great fun trying to wind you up during the course of the day, <laughs> um, getting um, Cameron Donald per persuading you that it was unbelievably slippery out there, which yeah. you fell for, which is good. And uh, I forget who else we got talking about. Well, we were chatting away to John McGuinness yeah. um, and Tom Sykes, Kawasaki World Two yeah, bike rider. He said, he, said he, he was and saying, I, I no was messing around. It's Deadly, you know. And I was there winking at the, <laughs> on the side. <laughs> well, it worked. I was very nervous. Yeah. Um, but of course, you know, it's a 200,000 pound bike. Somebody had crashed earlier in the day on a run on a bike. Um, it was just the thing that I knew I had to avoid at all costs. Well, shall we take a look? Great, let's do that. Okay. The Goodwood Festival of Speed has been a mecca for petrol heads since it opened its doors some 18 years ago in 1993. Set in the rolling hills of West Sussex, this annual event has become a must-go weekend for motor racers past and present. We were there catching up with some of the bikes and some of the star riders, but for me there was an even more exciting prospect in store and that was that I got the chance to ride Jonathan Ray's World Superbike Castrol Honda up that famous hill. Before we set off, I had a chat with Steve Booth, who just happens to be James's cousin see if you can spot the similarity. So we're down here at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. I'm with Steve Booth, who is the press officer for Castrol Honda World Superbike Team. Yep. Steve, thanks very much for the invitation. This is the bike that I'm going to be Welcome in. Yeah. This is, riding uh, up the iconic hill. This is, uh, this is Johnny Ray's factory-supported uh, World Superbike, uh, Honda CBR 1000RR Fireblade. Pretty much um, as you can ride away from your local Wow. But, with a few, uh, a few little extras. I was going to say, this isn't quite the bike that I could buy at, um, at a showroom. No, I think this, at the end of the day, Paul, this is, this is basically a bike that is a standard road bike. And, uh, it's, it's, it's tricked up a bit to I go racing. So the gears are the other way around? Gears the other way around. So, yeah, you just remember, flick it up once for first, and up the hill here at Goodwood, you will probably get into second and no more. So, Fine. one little tap. It's a quick shift as well, so you don't even have to shut the throttle. Right. Okay. Well, thanks very much, Steve, and uh, we'll see you afterwards. You enjoy it. Cheers. So we've just uh, bumped into Tom Sykes, world superbike rider for Kawasaki. How did, have you been up the hill? How was it? Certainly, yeah, obviously very, very slippy, but great spectacle as always. Um, we're here this weekend on a, on a full race bike, so I'm under strict orders not to, not to do any uh, serious wheelies or burnouts, which is always a shame. I'm, I think everybody knows me, I'm a bit of a crowd please. I like to like to entertain and I like to have the crack with everybody, but uh, yeah, that's that's taken the sting off, off the tail, you know. I would have liked to have uh, shaken things up a little bit, but uh, it is what it is. This this little baby leaves to, to Bruno tomorrow, so uh, obviously I want to keep it in good working order. And um, we last met when this bike, or the road version of this bike, was launched in uh, Qatar at yeah, the yeah. La Salle International Circuit. That was your first ride on it. How have you got to grips with the World Superbike version? Um, yeah, I mean, no question, it's, it's come come quite away from then, you know, uh, made a lot of improvements. Kawasaki and Paul Bird Motorsport have, um, have for sure done a lot of work and I think it's shown in the last uh, three rounds, you know, we've been inside the top five and uh, yeah, I think we're knocking on, on the door of the podium now and, uh, and ultimately a win. Um, I'm feeling quite confident. I think Kawasaki and Paul Bird will bring a little bit more to the table in the, in the 
the very near future and hopefully that's enough for me to uh, to repay everybody. Well we're looking forward to your first podium Tom. So, yeah, so uh, am I. Bruno. We'll see. Good luck Fingers mate. Crossed. Nice Thank one. You. That was my favourite bike. I'll give you a ride on it if you want. Sit on it. See if you're fit. Come on. Do you mind? No, Can I? Get on it. Yeah. Brilliant. Leg over, yes. Yeah. There you go, 170 ball an hour. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Get in. So we're um, bumped into Sammy Miller. So, Sammy, saw you come back down the hill. Two fantastic bikes here. What's this one? Well, these are both out of the museum collection. You know, we've got a museum in the New Forest, New Milton. This is the 500 um, Grand Prix Gilera. The, the great Jeff Jewett won many world championships on, followed by Bob McIntyre. So this is an icon of the Italian racing fraternity. Yeah. And it, as a little boy, I used to watch them race, and I said, it'd be wonderful if I could have one of these. So now I've got one. Brilliant. And I can ride it in parades and uh, Goodwood Revival. So it, it's a wonderful thing to ride. You know? And then we've got another famous bike, the Mike Hillwood world famous RC 181 Honda, right? Which the you know, Agostini, you know, Giacomo Agostini and uh, Mike Hillwood at epic battles in 1967, you know, in the TT and battling at all the Grand Prix in the world. And uh, fortunately, Mike won the world championship that year on the um, RC 181 Honda from yeah. Phil Reed. Was no, that no, he won from Agostini, that's right, Giacomo yeah. Agostini. Yeah. So, uh, two lovely bikes to have, and I think it's nice the Jalera has no fairing on it. It also ran with a full fairing, you know? Right. And um, I, I, that was for a big long Grand Prix because a fairing just to give you another 30 miles an hour. Top speed. Top, excellent 30 miles an hour. So wow. I, I prefer up Goodwood and the Festival of Speed, you know, it, it's nicer to ride it on streamline. So yes. Well, it's a beautiful engine, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. And, um, that's a photograph on the museum flyer there of the of the bike with a full fairing on. Right. And we, these bikes, <clears throat> when they're not at events, are down at your museum. Yeah. yeah. Joining um, joining the other 400. Wow. I, I've been there a few times. Every time I come to the New Forest, I pop in. Good. Um, so what are what are your other favourites from the museum? Well, the probably the the world's most advanced epic bike is the V4 liquid cool supercharged AGS that was the first bike to lap a Grand Prix at over 100 miles an hour. Wow. And then we have the Porcupine, which the, another AGS, uh, they call it the Porcupine because of all the fins are like Porcupine, you know, on it to keep it cool. And it won the World Championship 1959 with the great Les Graham, right. Stuart Graham's father. Right. And uh, Stuart wrote it here last year and it was quite emotional that the son was riding his father's Grand Prix winning bike. Wow. Of course, unfortunately, Les Graham was killed in the Isle of Man, you know, back in Grey Hill, so um, it's a bit emotional, but, and, you know, we could, we've got a racing hall, a Norton racing hall, so a well, little boy's dream come true. No, I'd, I'd, we'd love to come down, actually, and pay you a proper visit and uh, have you show us around. Bring your leathers. Brilliant. That's exactly what I wanted you to say. Put it there. Cheers. Nice one, Sammy. All the best. Thanks Paul. a lot. Cheers. Cheers. So we've been lucky enough to bump, bump into Honda. Um, John McGuinness, fresh back from the TT, and Fiona Cole, who's the press relations manager for Honda. John first, fantastic TT. It was, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, to win 16 and 17 was just, just incredible, you know. And uh, we've had a lot of luck around there in the past, the past few years. And last year we broke down a couple of times, so I was, uh, never thought I'd ever win one ever again. And this year, you know, we're doing a lot, obviously a lot of testing, a lot of a lot of racing with this World Endurance uh, TT Legends team and uh, you know John McGuinness is enjoying his racing again this year and went to the TT with a with a, you know feeling confident and uh, we won the two big major uh, races and also won the TT Championship overall so mega. And it's getting it's not getting any easier the TT the speeds are going up and up and up. That's right yeah I mean you know you're going to lap the course on a big bike at 131 plus miles an hour to be even uh, on the podium you know so but you know, it wasn't just me. It was a fantastic team effort. We had two great pit stops in both races, and uh, you know, we just we just did enough to beat beat the rest of the guys. Well, brilliant. Well done, John. Fiona, talk us talk to us a bit about the TT Legends team and the bike. I think it's John that could probably talk to you best about it. But essentially, the concept for this year was obviously we've run a road racing team. This year, with a slight difference, 
Honda Motor Europe have now actually taken that on board. So the boys are actually doing road racing, plus also the World Endurance Championship. So it's really sort of giving them that that long, that, that, that endurance type of racing through, throughout the year. So this is the bike that they obviously use for it. It's it's a fire blade in TT spec, and John can probably, uh, or road racing and, and endurance spec, which John can probably tell you a bit more about. Yeah, well, I mean, the world endurance thing, obviously, it's uh, 24 hour endurance races, six hour races and eight hour races, three riders, uh, some I've never done before, some of them, you know, that's, that, that for me is really exciting, I've done everything else in my racing career but never world endurance, but yeah, the bike obviously, it's got to, it's got to finish the races, we've got, I think we had 27 pit stops in the uh, the Baldor with 27 wheel changes, we use 800 litres of fuel, so uh, yeah, it's a big, I think there's 25 members of the team all uh, all going towards that, that one thing which is winning the races and uh, you know, we, we did alright finish fifth and for a new team and uh, a new bike in, in the series. I think we did a good job to finish fifth, so yeah, looking forward to the rest of the year. Brilliant. Well, thanks very much, John. Thanks, Fiona, and we look forward to seeing you go up the hill a bit later on. Thank you. So we're down um, in the paddock area, just about to go up the hill with Sam Lowe's. How are you doing, Sam? Yeah, very well, thank you, mate. How are you? Have you been up the hill before? Is this your first, first time? It's my first year. Obviously, we was there, was there yesterday, and it's good. And it was again this morning, so yeah, it's, it's good. Um, I didn't quite know what to expect coming here, but it's good. Yeah, a few waves at the fans to get real close to some winds and stuff. Yeah, it's really good. I hear it's slippy out there. Is that true? It's not ideal. It's not ideal, but it's good. You just got to uh, respect it a little bit and be careful when you do the wheels. You put the front wheel down straight. Brilliant. How are you getting on? Talk to us a little bit about the world scene. Yeah, to be fair, it's going really good. The last few races, we've had uh, two podiums that last two races. We're up to fifth in the championship now. and I went on Collarbone at the start of the year, just put on the back foot a little bit. and We've been fast at every track and we've been competitive, so we just need to keep keep that keep the consistency and just keep going. We're now next week. I really like the track. I'm looking forward to it. And then, then we've got Silverstone, so the big one. I need to get on it there. So no, it's all going really good. I'm loving the team and loving the bike and just want to get going. Well, like I say, we've got Silverstone coming up after Bruno. Yeah. You've got a lot of fans there, so yeah, the pressure's on a bit. Exactly, but the thing is, it's really nice to me. So I'm going to track that I rode, like, only last year I rode that track. And it would be nice to me, whereas now I'm going to track that I've never been to or not rode for a few years. So like, I'm going there and uh, yeah, I'm doing. Brilliant. Well, thanks a lot. Don't uh, come past me on the hill, please. <laughs> <laughs> So it's almost time for me to go up the hill for the first time on this Castrol uh, Honda World Superbike. Uh, it's Jonathan Ray's machine, he's injured, so uh, I've got the chance to have a go up there. I'm very nervous. Um, people have been telling me how this bike does well over 100 miles an hour at first. It's race shift, which I've not tried before. It's slippery out there. Uh, so hopefully uh, you'll see me again, but if not, then uh, it's been good fun so far. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> And then, before we knew it, we were assembling in the paddock and it was time for the off. There was no getting out of it now.
Paul, that looked amazing. What a nice day for it. Look yeah, at you. It was. I can't even stop smiling now. It was, it was fantastic. Um, so thanks, Jane, for sorting that out. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, no, a once in a lifetime opportunity. Nobody apparently gets the, the chance to ride on a World Superbike bike within the season apart from Jonathan Ray. So will they change their thing and go back to not allowing anybody back on a Superbike again after well, you? <laughs> that would be good. And I do have to say, I'm, nobody seems to have picked up on this, but can we just take a little look at the beautiful outfit that you were wearing? You look like yeah. a Power Ranger. Yeah, he's pretty special, isn't it? And, <laughs> and he was prancing, well, that's the wrong time, but strolling around, strutting around. Strutting. Good word. Yes. Pr proud as well. When I knew what I was going to be riding, um, I just thought I had no choice but to try and get myself fitted out in some brand new leathers for the occasion. 50,000 people remember um, a World Superbike. And um, the good people from Held Leathers, German manufacturer, top end suit made of kangaroo hide, all of the padding, all the titanium shoulder pads. Um, they came up with the goods in very short order. And um, yeah, I'm very pleased they did. Um, and we'll review that suit another time. I have a feeling now it's a little bit like giving a little boy his first sort of like Superman <laughs> suit and he's like, I don't want to take it off, but you've got to go to school. No, I am wearing it to school. <laughs> I am wearing, I'm surprised you've not turned up in here today. Well, maybe next week. All right. We've run out of time. I see that. Okay. All right. And that really is it for another week, but we will see you right here in two weeks time.